Welcome. This lesson is about how to learn and practice the blues scale guitar positions. You might know the one. You might have worked on that one, but there are five of them. And to really master the sound, master the fretboard with the blues scale, we need to work on all five of them. And there is a very specific way that I recommend working on them that just works amazingly well for really internalizing this sound and the structures on the fretboard. And it's incredibly fun. That's what we're going to talk about. Let's do it. If you practice the five blue scale guitar positions in this way, it's so worth it. It's so rewarding. You're going to have a much easier time picking up on things quicker, remembering them longer, knowing where you are in the scale, in the key, in a song, knowing where you are on the fretboard, and just to feel a little fresh, right? Get some new ideas breaking out of that one scale that we always jump around with if you're playing with it at all. If you haven't played with any blues scale, this is a great introduction. You're going to be ahead of the game by learning all five of these in this way instead of just working on that one blues scale forever. Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a ton about music theory, on mapping out the fretboard, and on practice strategies. Right now, I'm doing a series on covering a bunch of different scale types and how to practice them in this unique way that we're going to talk about in this video that really gets the sound and internalizes these scales. So I'm kind of covering the same uh, information, but applying it to a bunch of different scale types to kind of have a resource for people to go find all five scale positions of multiple different scale types. This one's all about the blues scale, and I think this one is very much needed because it's so ubiquitous in one way because of there is one of the five scale forms that everybody uses, and, and then it's so neglected in another way because all those other scale forms are so um, rarely used. And there's a reason why, and we'll talk about that. It's because the blues note that we're adding to the pentatonic scale to make it the blues scale ends up sometimes in these outside areas on the left or right of the scale position, scale position that makes us have to shift or stretch or reach. And it's confusing where to add that in. So that one very common blues scale, it is popular and common for a reason. It is, it is more ergonomic and, and easier to play. Um, but we just need a little bit of a puzzle solving, a little bit of a solution to work on those other four. And that's what I have for you here. I have a way to work on it to make that feel a little more seamless and sounds amazing. I think you're going to really like it. So here are the five blues scale guitar positions. Ideally, we want to know all of these equally well. I'm calling these the blues scale positions. They're called patterns. They're called scale forms. They're called scale shapes. Those are all interchangeable. You'll hear me use all of those terms. And there are multiple ways to play scales on the guitar, but these five scale forms and this approach where most scales and the scales that I'm covering in this series, there are five shapes to play them with. And this is what I recommend having very comfortable kind of having as your basis for knowing the scales before working on other strategies. So all five of the patterns here are written with the root as C, but you can move them around and play them in any key off of any root. So these five scale patterns are all movable. Now, since we have these scale forms on the screen here. Let's take a look at that blues note for a second. The blues note is the added note that we add to the pentatonic scale to make it the blues scale. So this one extra note is what makes it the blues scale. I covered major pentatonic and minor pentatonic in other videos in this series, but every scale really needs its own video. Like we can't just say add that extra note because they all feel different, look different on the fretboard, sound different, um, and we have to treat them differently. So that one added note makes all the difference. So let's look at that blues note for a second. What we see is that the blues note is on these scale forms, sometimes out of the position that we usually have to play the pentatonic scale. We have to go an extra fret over to add this blues note. 
from where the pentatonic scale was. Well, here is the strategy that I recommend, and you'll hear my demonstration. I'm gonna demonstrate through it after we talk about how to approach this more. But the blues note, when it's on the outside left or right of the scale form, what I recommend is that you play that note on the same string as the note that you are going to. And even better, if you slide into it, if you cr create a slur and slide into it, it sounds just incredible to use that blues note as a slur into the actual scale note. So when you have this outside note, you're gonna play, you're gonna end up playing it when you're ascending, you're gonna play it on the left side of the scale form. And when you're descending, you're gonna play that same note on a different string on the right side of the scale form. We wanna know how that note exists in multiple places because it does. Both of those options are kind of equally out of out of the way from the scale from the original scale position. We want to know that it exists in both those places equally. So this is a way to practice that, practice both those options in a way that's organized and makes sense and sounds good. So I talked a lot about this stuff in all these other videos, but I'm kind of repeating the information in each video for each unique scale because I want each video to be kind of a source to go to for each scale. But there's a reason we need to have kind of a special approach to uh, work on scales to really internalize them in, in a deeper way on the guitar. And the reason for that is that the root of the scale is not always the lowest and highest note of the scale forms. In fact, none of the scale forms have the root as the lowest and the highest note. Now, other instruments that don't play in positions, they usually play root to root. They play the root as the lowest note, and the root as the highest root, which sounds like the scale, they're practicing the scale, unless is an exercise that is not as calling for something different or if we're practicing modes that's a totally different thing or that's really its own scale if you're practicing modes you definitely want to play the root and the to the root of the mode so you hear it that way it's kind of like what we're doing basically or if you're practicing melodic patterns you can kind of go outside of the range of the of the root which we're gonna i'm gonna recommend doing that in a little bit so if most instruments like on the piano you would play root to root to practice your scales well, on the guitar we have these scale forms and we're practicing lowest note to highest note this is good to get it physically down to kind of hear the general sound of the note selection but it 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 doesn't really get us understanding uh the the true kind of depth of the sound of the actual root or the mode that we're trying to target or the key that we're actually trying to target the tonality and not only that we don't see where the roots are in the rest of the scale form we don't see it in other places we might know where it is on like a lowest note if we're starting there but that's it so the solution to really really getting these scales down is to target the root in a special way and that's the exercise that we're going to do i'm going to explain the rules of this exercise and then i'm just going to demonstrate through it on the blues scale so you can hear how well it works this is an organized way that could be the step that is needed to get you to finally uh, work on all five of these blues scale scale forms and and feel good about them and kind of get them down a big thing that working on the scales in this way where we are targeting the root to actually hear the sound of it, it it makes us realize how we can take the same physical scale shape and treat it as a totally different uh, scale uh, for example the the blue scale which we could call the minor blue scale which is which is this one well they're the exact same physical scale shapes as the major blue scale same notes same notes. So how do you know if it's one or the other? How do you, how can it be two different things? If it's, if those notes are the same types of scales, it's totally how you treat the root. It's targeting the root and treating it as the home base. That's what make, makes it, it sound completely different, major or minor. My next video in this series is going to be on the major blues scale. So you can compare how this one sounds to that one, or obviously practice it for yourself really is a big difference. So here are the rules to this exercise. This is called the root to root method or the root to root exercise. We want to practice any scale or mode ever that we want to learn this way. Uh, rule number one, we start on the root. Okay, pretty straightforward. Rule number two, we're going to play the whole scale form. Also pretty straightforward. Rule number three is that when you get to a root, every time you get to a root, you play it twice. This is kind of the crux of the whole thing. You can pause and play it twice. I like to pause a little bit or just kind of go through at the same tempo. As long as you play it twice, you're treating that root differently. It's going that that alone is going to make it sound like the mode or the scale that you're trying to play. But it's only going to work if rule number four, you don't repeat any other note. Don't repeat any other note other than roots. So don't repeat those outside notes that we often kind of stop and repeat on out of habit. Don't repeat those unless they happen to be a root. And then the fifth rule, the fifth guideline here, is that you want to end on the exact same root that you started on after playing the whole scale form. So if there's notes below it, you gotta come around, play all the notes below, wrap back around. Don't play that lowest note twice. Just bounce off the edge unless it's the root. 
you come back around, land on the same root that you started on. That's the root to root exercise. That's how we really internalize the sound of a true kind of tonality and scale and mode that we're working on. So now I'm just going to demonstrate through playing all five of the blues scale guitar positions in that way that I described. With other types of scales, what I said is enough. With the blues scale, because of the blues note, I want to say just a couple other things. One, we already talked about, we need to play, and it's in the diagrams, we need to play those blues notes on the outside. Uh, depending on if we're ascending or descending, we play them on at different times on e either side, depending on where we're going. But a big thing that I want to suggest and recommend is to slur from the blues note onto the next note. And I did already mention that, but that's that's what I'm going to do here so you can hear it. So that's how I want you to be able to play the blues scale in all those positions, just like that. I did it a little faster than I've been doing in the other lessons, a little faster of a demonstration. Do it at any tempo. It doesn't have to be fast, super slow. Uh, it sounds cool though, right? It sounds really great. Just, I mean, that's part of why the, the blues scale is so appealing. Just kind of up and down, it sounds awesome already. But with that slur in place, I think it, it brings it to life even more. So once you have that much down, once you can do that, here are the next steps to take to really continue to master your scales and really get them down. The first thing is to be able to do that, but off of every root and every key. Um, it's not as big of a deal as it sounds really. Work that out uh, with all the roots off C, like is like it's written out here, and then shift them to another key. Do keep Just keep track of it, just create a list, make a check mark, and after 12 different practice sessions or more, you can say, oh, at some point, doesn't matter if it took you two months, you can say, oh, at some point I've played each of these five blue scale position patterns in every single place where it can be played, in every key off of every root where it can be played. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. We want to have, have done that everywhere. Even though it seems like, well, it's just a physical form, you can just move it. It still is a little different in every place. It still sounds a little different. It still feels a little different. The frets are, are a bit uh, different uh, distances, up higher and lower. So you want to do it off, in, off every root and every key. The next thing to do to really get your scales down is to start doing melodic patterns. I talked about this in the other videos in this series. And the first melodic pattern that I think we should always do is melodic thirds. With the pentatonic scale, with the blues scale, it's not really melodic thirds. It's just this pattern of going up a note in the scale form and then, or skipping a note up and then going down one note. Skipping up, coming down one, skipping up, coming down one, and, and figuring out that pattern. With the blues scale, it, it's really odd and really unique. This is a test though to see how well we're seeing the whole thing as a map and not really seeing it as a maze, right? We're not seeing only next note, next note, next note. We're actually seeing this, this bird's eye view of being able to skip around and jump around. So it's kind of a test to that. Also, it just sounds awesome. It breaks up the scale, makes it sound less linear, makes it sound more melodic, stuff like that. It keeps it fresh, gives us cooler ideas. So with the blues scale, if we did this pattern, again, it's, it's, it's pretty funky and I really like it. It's, it's more rare to do with the blues scale. We're skipping up, coming down one, skipping up, down one. with the blues scale um the every other note pattern i call it the every other note pattern sometimes people people say hey it's not actually every other, no other note i just always called it that but uh this pattern is uh for the pentatonic scale i have it on a pdf with sheet music with tabs and it's part of three 
uh, what I think are the top three pentatonic scale guitar patterns to learn, to play more melodically, to play a little more tastefully, and have improvisations sound less like solos. I have a link to that PDF for free in the description that you can grab. It doesn't show it for the blues scale, but it shows you, at least for the pentatonic scale, something you can work on with, with the sheet music in front of you if you want to grab that. When working on melodic patterns, and you can work on other melodic patterns too, this is just the first one I recommend, but when working on melodic patterns, we don't have to think of root to root. Root to root is just its own exercise, just that one thing we do to internalize the sound to see where all the roots are. And then when you're doing melodic patterns, just do it through the whole scale form just to get that uh, sound down and again to see the map view instead of the maze view. The next thing to do to really get your scales down is just make sure you can do the exercise, the root to root exercise, if possible, ideally, uh, with a metronome at, at locked into time. Doesn't have to be fast, not working on speed, but just at a pace that's even because that's a nice test to see, are we having to think? Are we hesitating at all? We need to just be able to play it smoothly and evenly. That's a great test. And then the last thing is that we want to be able to improvise with it where we are targeting and coming back to the root uh, quite a bit, kind of targeting that home base of the sound, ending our phrases on the root, kind of coming back to it, uh, improvise around with all the shapes that way. Again, that's going to be an important, an important aspect of making it sound like the minor blues scale versus the major blues scale, which we're going to do next week. Three other quick things just to take into consideration. One is to be alternate picking as much as possible, alternating uh, down and up with the pick or I and M with the, with the fingers or alternating any two fingers can be with the thumb. Uh, so that's one consideration. The other one is just be aware of your tone. Be aware of your tension and your um, how aggressive you're playing over here. If you're getting buzzes, if you're getting rattling, just be aware of that. Um, if it's a warm tone, if it's a bright tone. And you can rotate betwe between thinking about these things. We can't think about them all at once, but that's another thing to kind of check in on. And then the third thing is to play work on playing legato and connected as much as possible, trying to get those notes to be connected so they're not there's not kind of a hiccup between them or, or this gap between the notes. At first, if our technique isn't quite there yet, that's normal and that's necessary. And as we get flexibility and dexterity, we can play more connected and legato. But get your ear tuned into hearing it, uh, whether or not there's little spaces in between the notes that you can kind of shrink in over time. If you work on the five blue scale guitar positions in this way that we talked about with the root to root method, get those down and the other stuff. And it's, it's, it's a long game. This is a lifelong thing, always working on scales, kind of getting them down. But if you do it in this way and internalize it, you're just going to find that the rewards are huge. You'll be able to learn parts quicker, especially if they're melodic things, especially if they're part of the blues scale all over the guitar. You're going to learn them quicker. You're going to see them on the fretboard more clearly. You're going to know where you are in a key more clearly. You're going to know, you're going to hear things better because you were focused on that root. There's just so many benefits. You're going to remember things longer because you're seeing these structures. And we want to do the same practice approach with every type of scale we want to learn. That's why I'm making this series of videos. So there's kind of a walkthrough of every scale. The next video in this series I'm going to do, like I already said, is the major blues scale, kind of the neglected of the two blues scales. So it's the same notes, but then treated as major. And it sounds rad, sounds awesome. It's a little more kind of country or bluegrass and really great to use. Like I mentioned, if you want to get that free PDF of the top three pentatonic scale guitar patterns for more melodic soloing, just use the link in the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns. That's number three patterns. It's a nice little sheet, can be a game changer for getting those improvisations, those jams you're doing to sound a little less like scales, a little more like melodies. That's it for this lesson. Make sure you're subscribed and you hit the bell. Happy scale practicing. Thanks for watching. Take care.